everyone, welcome back to Northwind Aerial Imaging. So after our last video of camel versus drones, we had a bunch of people say, why bother hiding from drones when you can just shoot them down? So, brought Travis back with his fancy shotguns and a lot of very expensive ammunition to test what effective ranges some 12 gauge shotguns are. So we're gonna be doing a couple different size targets, starting off with a target from about the size of a Mini 3 Pro, and then we're gonna go up to something the size of the Mavic 3T, and then all the way up to Matrice 30T, the largest drone we have. We have a couple different uh, target size for this right here, for instance, is gonna simulate whether the drone's like right on top of you and you're looking up at it. And then we have one where it's gonna be facing straight forward. And we're gonna try and, and see how, uh, how effective different shotgun shells are coming out of a 12 gauge at different ranges. So the way we're gonna have these targets set up is this right here is the propeller zone. We're gonna call this the C zone. That means if you hit it with the pellet right here, it's not a guaranteed kill for the drone. If you can take out the full propeller, the drone's gonna come out of the sky. I know that quite well, um, but it's still, it can, the drone propellers will fly with holes in them. So here, and most of the drone body, we're gonna call the B zone, because there's a good chance you can take the drone out, but the drone, I mean, for instance, just the Mavic right here, is pretty hard plastic, and it has metal here on the bottom. So it's not a guaranteed kill shot that way. However, a guaranteed kill shot I'm gonna suggest would be the battery compartment right here and the gimbal. Because if we take out the batteries, these are lithium ion, there's a good chance the battery's gonna light on fire. They don't call them spicy pillows for nothing. And then the gimbal, if you take out the camera, now you're just flying a toy drone. You're not flying anything that has infrared sensor, doesn't have any camera capabilities. The M30 has a forward facing FPV camera that'll help you guide it back, but the tactical ability of it to spot targets is pretty much gone. So a little back background on us, prior United States Air Force Security Forces, so I've had plenty of firearms training throughout my life. Uh, also been a pretty avid hunter throughout my life, not as much as Travis, who is a lot better hunter than I am. So we are both, I would call, very, very familiar with firearms. We major in uh, common sense. We major so. in common sense. It's a very rare class. If you haven't taken it, I suggest it. It's a pretty good elective. So we, we're trained on firearms. We know pretty much everything about our firearms and Travis, as mentioned in the last video, knows fancy words like ballistics. So I'm gonna have him be doing most of the shooting today <laughs> and going over kind of what shells and everything we're gonna be using. Um, we're on a private range. There is nothing in our backdrop. Uh, pellets are in no danger of hitting anything or anyone. So keeping things nice and safe and uh, gonna have a good time. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and throw on the first target we're going to start off with uh mini 3 pro target we're about 25 yards about 25 yards 25 yards we're going to start from there with some bird shot and uh move our way back all right so these are the mini 3 pro targets i traced them myself so this is how it's going to look if the drone is flying right above you and this is how it's going to look if it's facing straight at you so we're going to put them both up here and take some shots and uh see how well it patterns so we're gonna be doing these on flat range because we're basically simulating best case scenario shooting wise. A, because we don't wanna be throwing tungsten rounds into the air as we're trying to shoot down real drones because we're not shooting down my real drones. That's why we're using targets. And we're going to, this is basically as close to ideal shooting conditions as you're gonna to wanna to get. The wind is actually blowing with us, with the pellets, so it's gonna carry them. The pellets aren't gonna be fighting any squirrely winds up in the air. They're not gonna be in counter resistance as they fly forward against the wind. So this is about as good as you're gonna get shooting wise, trying to hit something. All right, Travis, walk us through your shotgun a little bit. We're gonna be using three different shotguns for the first test, just for ease of transition. I have two shotguns that are similar. One's a pump action, one's a semi-auto, but they're both three and a half inch chambers. They're both 28 inch barrels. One's gonna have a full choke, one's gonna have a modified choke so that it's easy to transition between sh uh, shot patterns if I want to. For the ammunition, we're gonna probably start out small. We're gonna start with some dove loads, number six. Those are two and three quarter length. Then we'll move to probably uh, three inch uh, birdshot number four. Uh, then we'll transition maybe to this, which would be three and a half inch number four birdshot. And then we'll get into some of the spicier um, predator rounds or turkey loads in order, if we have an issue reaching out there. We'll verify this. It's yeah. close. If we're half a yard out, we'll call it good. 
that's 24 and a half yards. Cool. So first shot, we are going to run two and three quarter inch steel number six shot. This is like a dove load or upland game load. Good to go. Good. All right. Going hot. All right. Well, I think that kind of speaks for itself. <laughs> uh, it would be fairly easy to make an impact. And at this range, I realize this is cardboard, but especially the uh, <clears throat> impellers are not dense, would not be hard. And also the amount of energy, even that a shot size that small carries at this oh. distance would break plastic with no problem. Absolutely. I mean, I saw even put on the duct tape there, just give a little more um, density. Yeah, a little more density, but I mean, this right here, that is a kill shot for sure. This right here, absolutely kill shot. This propeller, I mean, this is where the uh, motor is. That's dead. These two are probably fine. Maybe this propeller is probably gone. This propeller is definitely gone. And then the whole body to drown. So I'd say 25 yards, bird shot, drone's dead. Yep. All right. So that was 25 yards. We are going to be moving out to 50 yards now. We don't feel the need to shoot anything else at 25 yards because that was the smallest target we have and it smoked it. So we're going to move out to 50 yards and try it again on the Mini 3 and probably the Mavic 3 targets and see how well it goes from there. All right, we've moved out to 50 yards. Same round, same shotgun. Okay, here we go. Well, that's spread. Yeah, that would, that would be much more difficult. I can see that it still carries... Just looking at the wood here off to the side, it carries a lot of energy. So if it, it did impact, it would probably have a good chance. But with that particular shot size, uh, see the BB still embedded in there. The, the, the hit ratio is rather low. Yeah. Cause we got probably call that as C zone, C zone, one B zone, one maybe B zone right there. And all it takes is right. One impeller to not be in the right position. And it's a miss. Correct. So, yeah, because like there's a good chance, especially that one right there could be miss. I'd call that one almost a miss. And then down here, maybe a miss because these are quite exaggerated over the actual size of the arms. That right there, I'd call a good B zone because that would, there's a good chance that could take out the motor if it penetrated. And the fact we got almost an entire BB's worth of penetration over here in the wood in some places maybe maybe the 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 likelihood of making an impact though i would uh, i would definitely switch up my setup in order to give me a, a better better hit rate so we're going to jump up since there wasn't a good hit ratio um to three inch number four unfortunately there's not going to be a lot of bb's as far as the total count let's see this is one and one eight uh, load charge instead of one ounce. Oh, I don't know the exact count. It's probably a good equivalent. Uh, I don't know the exact count. What kind of hunter are you? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to run this. This is the next step. Gotcha. What round is this? So this is a three inch number four shot size. Gotcha. Good to go. Good to go. All right. So we're going to run the three inch number four shot through a full choke again. Doesn't seem any point to run a mod choke. The pattern would be too big. Perfect. All right, here we go. Okay. Well, we, got, we got a lot better hit ratio. That one's new. Neither, those two are old. That's why I, I totally forgot to grab a pen. Yeah, we might, I don't know if it was it would even be worth putting up a new target. I bet you the pattern is pretty similar yeah because i'm trying to think we had that one was an old one that was an old one and then that one i think we have a few in here a few in there a few right one right and there maybe some on the edge but it's I'd really still, not much better no i'd say most of them are still very much in the c zone because that one does that one do no that one's from last time i believe check the footage <laughs> we'll check the, we'll check we'll check the footage <laughs> but uh I think we might as well just go up to something spicier. Let's go up to something spicier. All right, next round. Next round, we're going to run another birdshot variant. We're going to run a three and a half inch 
number four, one and three eighths ounce shot charge. So going up to three and a half, we got a lot more dog in that, don't we? Yeah. Yep. This should be a better option in my mind. We'll see. You versus the guys who tells you not to worry about. <laughs> All right, so doing a different round. Yep, three and a half inch, number four, one and three eighths ounce charge. All right, everybody clear? Clear. All right, I've, I've of course left the pen back there. That's a good shot. That one I'd call good. That's a definite kill shot if it hit the motor. And then down here, I'd say that's a good solid B zone. That looks like it would have taken out one of the safety sensors and that probably would have just missed it. Hmm. Interesting part. I don't spend a lot of time patterning shotgun shells on cardboard. For how much we jumped up in, in size, I would have figured it would have carried a little bit tighter of a pattern, but honestly, it's... it's. I think it still has a pretty good tighter pattern, especially for like little breeze we have right here. Because I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all in this area right here. That's a hell of a lot more better, a better pattern than like the first shot we had where True. we had like four BBs on target all over in this area. True. So, I mean, a little bit better. Want to step it up to a different target? We're going to step it up. So the max legal flight altitude for drones in the United States is 400 feet. Right now we are at 50 yards, which is right about 150 feet, which is a pretty good height that I fly at a lot of the time. So we're going to bump it up to the Mavic, one of the most common drones, if not the most common drone chassis out right now, and see how average drone, average elevation, average altitude rather, fares against the same spicy shells. All right, so we switched it up to the Mavic target. 50 yards, 150 feet, see how it goes. I'm gonna leave the tape out here so I don't have to keep bringing it back. Don't shoot my tape, Travis. <laughs> Same round, Mavic target, 50 yards. Here we go. Okay, gives me a better idea of Still a pretty good pattern. I mean, even out this far, I mean, the bird shot was definitely falling off, but that right there, B zone, C, C, all these are C. I'm tempted to call that one an A zone right there because that's gonna be right at the base of the gimbal. So if you were right underneath it, there's a good chance you take out that entire gimbal, not just the camera. Okay. This right here, if it's looking straight at you, that's a dead shot right on the camera. You've broken at probably at least one of the sensors, probably disabled something right there. That wing, if you got enough energy, you could probably make, take it off. That right there, even with the exaggerated outline, that's probably a dead motor. That's probably a dead sensor right there. And then non-hits right there. So still 50 yards and what was that shell? Three and a half inch, number four shot, ounce and three eight. So yeah, all those numbers at 50 yards are still looking, looked at performing pretty well. I would say, let's try the buckshot because that way we can definitely see the difference in okay. it because these are going to have a lot more um weight behind them probably a lot more inertia probably. so the only thing about these double op buck in a two and three quarter inch shell pretty standard uh i'm going to be running it through a tactical shotgun with a cylinder it's a fixed choke um at this range it's probably going to be okay if we were to stretch it out more unfortunately i don't have a buckshot shell type that has a um, controlled pattern there's a lot of manufacturers that have wads that control the pattern of the shot as as well as the barrel itself or the choke itself we do not have that so <laughs> if we were to stretch this out i can pretty much guarantee that the pellets are probably not going to impact at great distances but at this range we should be okay well let's try them then while Travis goes over there and uh, figures his life out with this shotgun, I'm gonna provide a little more context. This is very much a test on if a drone was stationary or not. And if it was hovering in the air, for instance, if it was such as a spotter drone, bomber drone, something along those lines of taking it out as it's holding still. This is definitely not to simulate um, 
taking out FPV drones, like the FPV Kamikaze drones coming in, not meant to simulate a drone in flight, moving, because um, I'm not sure logistically how we would set that up with a moving target to reach the speeds of FPV drones of drones in flight. Cause I mean, for instance, the, the Mavic can fly about 40 miles an hour plus in sport mode. I've gotten them a tree, so we're 50 miles an hour in sport mode. And then all of the FPV drones are flying when they're in a dive, really screaming, sometimes upwards of 90 miles an hour. So this is basically just a good baseline test. Double op buck. Uh, this is a, I believe this is two and three quarter inch double op buck. This is out of a Remington 870 tactical version, 18 inch barrel fixed cylinder choke. Perfect. That sounded a little spicier. Uh-huh. Did not even impact. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now I'm really curious how close I would need to be because this is one of those things I have not tested, spent time testing. Um, obviously you shoot buckshot out of that style shotgun and setup pretty frequently, but. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good, it's a small, like you said, tactile shotgun. It'd be something you'd have in the trenches as compared to, yeah, there's a good chance you have a hunting shotgun, but if you're in an armed forces, there's a good chance you're gonna be wanting to use something like this, a little bit lighter, a little more compact in your trenches for defense anyways. Um, we're gonna scoot up to 25 real quick and make a shot and see what what went wrong. Let's do it. Oh, someone somewhere in here is 25. 25 yards, double up buck. <laughs> I don't know everything. <laughs> I um. I don't see any. Oh, they may, no, that's a that's an old that's an old hole right I, there. I saw I saw the impact behind the target. I know it was in the vicinity. I am, but we're also only talking about twelve pellets. What are you ten yards? Satisfied a buckshot enjoyers? Yeah. <laughs> if you had a twenty-six inch barrel with the right choke set up for buckshot, with a much better shell. Is there a reason you can't run this shell out of your other shotgun? Um, Just different choke size or what? It is not, oh, the comments are gonna be lovely about this, but <laughs> it is not. That's right, I'm, I'm asking for them as well as me. It's not like I know. <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily advisable, not so much that you can't do it because it is lead and it will compress through a full choke. It's that one, not all chokes are rated for that kind of pressure and two, um, there's a kind of uh, rebound concept is the best way I can explain it. So all the pellets, when you're trying to force it through such a small board, and it's not the same as the, where it originally started, uh, they will compress, but only to a point, and then they rebound out. And so it might actually, in some cases, make your pattern larger than if you had just ran it through a standard cylinder size bore. That makes sense to me. So uh, we're gonna run 10 yards and see. 10 yards. See what happens. Yep. 10 yards, double up buck. Okay. Well, that explains it for you right there. I mean, 10 yards, we're at 30 feet and that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then some went up over the top. Obviously I have some, I did not prepare for this well, so my point of aim is not great. But uh, even if my point of, well, we can step back now and fix my point of aim and see what happens. Let's do that. Let's step back to like 20, 25, whatever, and aim a little lower. <laughs> Same round, gonna aim at the bottom target from how many yards? Uh, let's go back a little tiny bit. We're almost there. All right, this is 25. Cool. <laughs> well, which, uh, which target were you aiming at again? This is my point of aim. <laughs> huh. That, that's interesting. I mean, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14, 15, 16. We were at nine. So, uh, 
about one's... about the same percentage made impact. That's that's interesting. Um, I'm gonna take one last shot at this. I realize my equipment is my fault. But, gonna uh, aim at the dirt this time. Pretty much. <laughs> aim low. Tell me I don't know how to shoot. Here we go. This is really why I'm having Travis have all the spotlight this time, so they can all make fun of his aim and not <laughs> mine, because his is definitely better than mine. Hey, we got some rounds on target this time. Okay. Well, if it's looking at you, it's still pretty safe. Well, we'll, we'll call that, uh, if my point of aim was actually correct and I wasn't incompetent, <laughs> we'll call this was, we'll call that my point of aim was here. We got one, two, three, four. That's, five, that's a dead drone. Five. That's a dead drone because the whole, six, the whole battery takes up that, that one potentially, and that one's from your second shot and that one would probably hit the gimbal. But surprisingly, the size of the pattern is about the size of the imp the entire impact zone. Yeah. Um, it would definitely, one impact would take it down, but it would be very difficult at 25 yards to hit a drone moving at speed. So... Uh, with Yeah, definitely with buckshot. Yeah, because buckshot is a relatively slow moving projectile. It's very heavy. Huh. So, Slow moving, but lots of energy, so to take it out, but yeah, you're gonna wanna hit something, as previously mentioned, if this is moving at 50 miles an hour, not sure buckshot's to play no matter what. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, that's not my first choice. No, maybe it was like 10 yards and it was a, uh, maybe it was like a M30 or a uh, Agris style or something, but hmm. Sorry, buckshot enjoyers. So we're gonna bump out to 100 yards because pretty much everything at 50 yards, we've been finding and going, got a pretty good information on that and we don't want to be spending our really expensive rounds on uh, 50 yards so we're gonna bump out to 100 yards and we're gonna start off with something small but still a little spicy and then move all the way up to the very very expensive rounds and see how if we hit something at double the range we're already having a hard time hitting stuff at <laughs> boom sweet so we move back to 100 yards see how well anything reaches out and touches it from here what are we shooting first at 100 yards we're going to shoot the three and a half inch number four and see if we can even impact at this distance it's going to say that is quite a ways out there yeah well, i don't know we'll see we'll find out all right good to go good to go you, you should probably edit that out <laughs> oh i see holes oh jeez. okay so Miss, 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 C zone, miss. Uh, oh, so we're starting to not. Oh, bouncing, you're right. They're bouncing off. They're not penetrating even I cardboard. I didn't even think about that. So yeah, at, so at, holy crap. Yeah, I just didn't at realize 300 that. feet. So that's, yeah, that's not even. I don't think. That's barely. They, they might've snuck through, but they definitely no. didn't have a lot of energy. That one. That one is bounced out. That one, I mean, you should... Actually, that one might have gone through. Yeah, if it did, it didn't It didn't go through but, anything behind but it. But still, that bounced off. Now that I realize there's bounce-offs, yeah. that's a hit, but a bounce-off. That's a hit, but a bounce-off. So that one right there. So I would say, even if you hit it, it at 100 uh, yards... Yeah, it might not. It probably doesn't probably doesn't have enough energy i mean down. the fact it's not going through cardboard yeah good to know good to know science science <laughs> uh, no that it. one Let's see if there's so that was me aiming right slightly slightly above target I yeah feel so like even that was a that was so yeah even accounting for bullet drop at this range still hit pretty good on there but I mean, for that size round, I think that's as good a shot as you could have gotten. And the fact there's no penetration. Those, that's, I don't like those odds. No. We're gonna move up to the turkey load. This is three and a half inch, five, six, and seven shot. Is this, is this turkey load? I thought this was like the spiciest we had. No, that, that I would cons, well, okay. Oh, Excuse gotcha. Me. We could look at that two different ways. This is technically a three inch shell but this is T shot size. So this is, um, 
kind of bridging the gap between some kind of bird shot and buckshot. Okay. So we could, we're going to throw this at it next. <laughs> gotcha. So this it's is kind of a wash. I just want to compare it to kind of a wash. Um, and you don't think that that extra length, that extra girth is going to make um, so much of a difference? So the shot size is much larger inside this shell. Okay. The shot size is much smaller inside this one, inside this one, but there's more of them. So it's, but they're very similar. So. Gotcha. So you think, even though there might be, it sounds like there's probably a little less powder in this one, the extra shot in this one. This is going to carry a lot more energy, in my opinion. Going to carry a lot more energy. It's probably better penetration. This one's going to have more of a spread to potentially hit it that far out. Yes. So it's actually showing you, as an example, how there will be varying uh, pattern sizes depending on the shot as it comes out of the shell itself. You have the number seven shot patterning out at around 34 yards and number six will be about 49 yards and number five will be about 66 yards, which is still very short of where we're I was gonna to say, reach. we're at a hundred yards. <laughs> gotcha, so. so. Yeah, and most of the, I also don't have a choke size that would be optimum for turkey hunting. Usually you want some variation of an extra full choke or a turkey load specific choke which could even be smaller um i do not have that <laughs> so this is this is what we're going to work with you're working with what you got don't worry you got the wind at your back you'll help carry the pellets that extra 30 <laughs> yards <laughs> uh, we're going to do a three and a half inch number five six and seven shot sweet 100 yards holy <laughs> That is, Spicy? That is not enjoyable. <laughs> well, that's... All right. I see impacts, and it definitely I see. penetrated. I, see, I did not bring the pen. Oh, no. I am, I am the worst. Huh. Yeah, that's... Let's... Did that penetrate? So, let's see. We got these two right here. So, yeah, that's penetration. That's a definite kill shot I'd see through there. Those two did not, I guess they went out. Yeah, they made, they made it, it looks like they made it through. They made it, that's, that's where man, I'd want to have some plastic to really see. That one right there though, 100 yards, tungsten, three and a half inch round. Maybe, just maybe you might take out a Mavic. So we'll move it out to 300 feet. I think we'll throw up an M30 target on it. Oh, we'll do the last round for the Mavic and then we'll just- Right here, yeah. Yeah, we'll do the last round, the spiciest round for the Mavic. And then we'll move out to 400 feet, put up an M30 target. See if we can even impact. See if we can even impact, see if we can even penetrate because that's how, that's like the highest altitude we can legally fly and that's gonna be the range. But I'm already getting proved a liar. I didn't think we we're gonna hit anything past 200 feet. I, I really yeah, did it. I mean, that's some pretty good odds. Um, that's a very specialty round. Very specialty round, but I'm looking at it from, I guess we'll start walking back while we talk. I'm looking at it from like a military perspective of if you're using taxpayer dollars. It doesn't matter. You can they, use, could, they could build a very specific tungsten round. Oh, that. yeah. That's that's my thought is, yeah, because I mean, yeah, we're not going to be able to shoot 40 Mike Mike HEDP out here. But the government's gonna have them. They gave they gave my dumbass eighteen of them in Kuwait, and <laughs> I assume yeah, if they find out, hey, three and a half inch loads with tungsten is the most cost effective at taking out something up to around three hundred yards, maybe even four hundred, then let's give it to the Joes on the battlefield and see. Definitely, definitely effective in my mind. We will find out. For one more. Oh yeah, it'll be fine. <clears throat> okay, going over the last shell that we are gonna run. This is a three inch, one and a half ounce shot charge with T-Shot. Something I've never used before. Uh, it is obviously larger than uh, BB or triple B shot that you would use say for goose hunting. So three inch tungsten rounds. 100 yards. Let's see what happens. Good to go. Good to go. How's that shoulder feeling, buddy? It's doing great. <laughs> we had we had one one impact. We had one impact. C zone and it penetrated. That is. 
that is one pellet on paper. Mm, that could be. Oh, there's there's another pellet right there, right there, but. Okay, the pattern was huge. Yeah, I mean, I, I was expecting to see at least some, but. I could understand if, you know, I made a really horrible shot and. No, didn't you were. Anything, but. You were kneeling down, you were good to go. The fact that. I only see three shots. There's one and those two on the tape. I, I saw I saw them impact behind target. And it could have been that they, the shot was a little bit left because of the wind pushing it, but not by a ton. No. That's, uh, definitely comes back to always pattern your shotgun before you go use it on any sort of game. Especially if it's the most dangerous game. <laughs> I'm gonna swap this target out for the M30T target because that is the biggest target we have. And we're going to step it out to 400 yards. Feet. Feet. 400 feet. Yeah. <laughs> 400, 400, 400 yards, we're not going to. So 400 yards, we're going to need shrapnel or something. <laughs> and see if at the highest legal flight altitude. Oh, I should have given you more tape. Just go around a few times. <laughs> if we can get 400 feet, if we can hit anything at all. There we go. See, this is, this is just true talent we're experts as i drop this <laughs> anybody in the comments that's saying uh i can shoot three and a halves all day long at geese <laughs> it's not fun no it's not no enjoyable. It, does, it does not look enjoyable at all all right that's how we know we're getting close to ending filming anyways we are just about out of duct tape and not everybody is scott from kentucky ballistics no no <laughs> They are not. That's a dinosaur. 30 more yards. That's 135. Oh man, we're good to go. We're gonna go out here with three and a half inch number four. It patterned the best out of the shotgun and at 400 feet. 400 feet, M30T target. This is gonna be, can anything take out a large drone at 400 feet? Good to go. Good to go. God, that sounds so painful. So yeah, instead of walking out there, we're gonna just fly out there. I, I see, see impacts. there are impacts. God, we're gonna have to walk out there and circle them. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I, I thought I won. I didn't. Nope, there's, there's several impacts out there. Okay, well, we'll start, we'll start walking. Here I was thinking I was gonna be smart and beat the walk with the drone. Nope. Apparently, shot, Travis is too good of a shot. So now we actually have to go out there and look at it. Huh. So, I forgot the pen again. God, I swear. <laughs> so, hit and hit. I think that's just a dent. I don't think that's a hit, a hit right there. Nothing on the bottom one. And even at this range, I would expect it to drop to at least have hit something on the, that. The pattern is so massive. The pattern's so massive and we had no penetration. I bet you if I looked around, I could probably find those BBs from that if I really wanted to. But yeah, there is hit, but no penetration. All right, what else did you want to test? I think the was, problem is I'm limited by choke. If I had an extra full choke, we could really yeah. kind of, that's about the limit. Was that titanium that we should, not titanium, steel. That, was, that was steel? That's steel. Let's fire one or two of the tungsten rounds at it. Just, I mean, those are heavier. Maybe have a little more inertia. The and turkey, the turkey load might. Then yeah. let's let's do those two. Because the T shot was not. Uh, it didn't. The pattern. It doesn't pattern tight enough. Okay. But the turkey load, the five, six, seven, probably has the next best chance of well, making an impact. You are the expert on this. I will defer to <laughs> what you think. I'm anything's a, gonna kill it at all i'm a wikipedia expert there you go cool <laughs> just remember yell at travis not me he's the one who's making the decisions we're gonna switch this up because i can't have all the fun there's just Are so much sure? joy in this i brought you out here you can have fun <laughs> um, <laughs> you <laughs> here you go so remind me of what shot this is so this is the turkey load this is a three and a half inch Number five, six, and seven shot. What he said. All right, ready? Ready. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It's so enjoyable. Ow! Oh! No, I'm not even playing for the camera. I'm pretty sure I missed every single shot too. I hit everything, hit the dirt. I gotta fire another one, but I gotta switch here. I could not get a good cheek weld with this. Oh! Oh! I'm so bruised. Oh! All right, see if I can get a better shot than that. Okay. Uh, okay, summarize again. This is a three and a half inch number five, six, and seven shot. I would say, what did I do to deserve this? But, all right, ready? Ready. A little bit higher this time. <laughs> That's not fun. No, <laughs> not at all. And I could see every single round hit the dirt in front of it. Oh, really? Every single round. <laughs> Do you want to go with the third one? I I feel bad because again, I can see every single round hitting the dirt at this range. And I have this, were you aiming above it? I was aiming top edge. I was putting this like right on top of it and it was hitting, I could see every BB hitting the dirt. Okay. All right. Well, then you got to send another one. <laughs> you only have one left, so... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to stand up for this one, so that way I can try and get a little more elevation. Okay, are you going to go a foot above the target? Two feet above the target? I'll do what feels comfortable. Okay. We'll see. I'll probably... Yeah, I'm going, to put, I'm going to put the sight right above the top of the target. Okay. Because I, I don't want to be sitting there doing artillery rounds up in the air, but... Ow. <laughs> God, I am a pansy. This is this is very enjoyable. Alrighty. Ready. I can still see it the heading all in front of it. Really? Every, I can see just duff dust puffs all in front of it. Okay. God, I'm getting used to it. I'm going numb. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so I'm wondering if it's because because that round was made of what metal? Uh, that should also be tungsten, if I so, remember right. So that's one of the things that I'm wondering, because I know tungsten is a very heavy metal. It is a very dense so metal. So that's what makes me think that we got a lot more and drop also, out of it. And also, that one has the largest uh, load number, meaning the total weight of BBs is the most out of everything. Gotcha. Even, yeah, out of everything, even the uh, buckshot. Good to know, because that's so I got the tungsten rounds thinking they would have a lot more inertia, they'd fly a lot further. Yeah. They'd absolutely. puncture, they they you know I mean like the the missiles we fire from like high Mars and whatnot. They're made of tungsten BBs. They just air burst and whatnot. So I was thinking, okay, tungsten's gonna reach further because it's got more inertia, it's gonna puncture further because it's got more weight behind it. But I think I might have gotten that backwards because I could just see tungsten BBs scattering all over the ground. Well, I mean, I think pretty much everything is going to have this. This is way beyond the limit yeah. of anything shotgun related. Um, I see a few more on target, but yeah, you're, you're immensely. Well, yeah, you got up to the top edge of the target. That's what happens when you fire three rounds at it. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, so those are in, we got. We got hits all over, mostly yep. C, couple B, couple A, I guess but nothing is penetrated. So even with using that heavy tungsten round that I was just talking about, that I was thinking if anything was gonna puncture armor. Yeah, nothing is, yeah, nothing went through. Uh, if nothing went through the cardboard, then that's showing, I would say. There might be. There is, oh, that, this is this is old cardboard right here. Oh, I'm not even looking at my. No, yeah, since we're getting to the end of here anyway, cause our shoulders are bruised and mushy and we're out of duct tape. So we can see if we had... Shout out to Half Face Blades, you should sponsor us. These are pretty nice and sharp. So... Come on, wind. Wow, we got more penetration than I thought. We have a BB stuck. still stuck in there right now. There we go. So BB still stuck in there. I'm just... Don't lose it, it's precious. Yep, and that's got a hole on the other side. So that one definitely went through. There's another one that's stuck. That's 
That's pretty amazing. We're hitting at just the right range for cardboard to capture it. But yeah. Yeah. That's pretty Cardboard impressive. to capture it, but I'm going to say if it's hitting cardboard. And barely making it through. Barely making it through. I don't think don't think it's going to be going through hardened plastic and potentially hardened metal this is not this the fact i'm able to pull these out of the back yeah there are some that penetrated but these penetrated and got stuck that means they lost just i mean we're talking less than pellet gun energy at that point because yeah. i i can shoot this with a pellet gun and it's going to go right through it an air pellet gun and it will not catch it so the fact that these are hitting and getting stuck in the cardboard i would say 400 yards 400 feet rather um that, that is the, I don't think you're taking it out. No. So, but the fact that the, I'll have to go back and kind of review the footage, but at 300 feet, it was still puncturing pretty good. Yeah. Certain rounds, but 400 feet, AGL, most likely safe. Well, we did science for you. Uh, found out some rounds worked at great close ranges and uh, some rounds worked not as good out to far ranges. I really expected the tungsten rounds to do a bit better, but that's physics. That's physics. Yep. We're learning. We are learned it in. So what do you think, Travis? I Overall. think that turkey loads are impressive. And it's amazing how far the technology has gotten. I'm sure if I had more options, I had a longer barrel shotgun, I had more choke options, we could really dial that in. Um, a full choke, which is what we used for the entire test, is surprisingly versatile. Mm -hmm. If you consider 300 feet and in, it has a relatively good span, <clears throat> especially for a smaller drone. Yeah. I, I would definitely think that somewhere around that would be a combination I would run if I were trying to take down a drone daily. Yeah, I uh, will fully admit I got to eat crow. I expected nothing to hit it past 200 feet. And even up to 300 feet, we were still getting some pretty good hits on target, especially with the turkey load. I would not have called that. Never would have expected that. And then even up to 400, I expected nothing to hit it at all. And it took three rounds to hit it with the tungsten and probably didn't kill it, definitely. But I still, I, I would not expect to have anything on target past 200. I was expecting to sit there and be laughing, going, you ain't got to hit me. Yeah, yeah, and if you were to fly a mission, you definitely, it's easy to tell what your safe range would be if you wanted to keep it uh, operable. Yeah, so any other thoughts? No. Uh, you guys are welcome to fund this channel yeah. if you would like to see tests involving destroying drones but yeah, we are I'm not, not wealthy no we're we're not and i'm not going to shoot my own drones because speaking of which legal disclaimer don't shoot drones down it is the same as shooting at aircraft until the faa decides it's not don't shoot at aircraft don't shoot at drones if you're in an area of the world where <laughs> shooting drones is the difference in surviving another day or going home into forever box now you know what your options are. Now, turkey loads. Don't worry about fancy three and a half inch tungsten rounds. It'll break your shoulder. Just hunt turkeys. <laughs> That's all you gotta know. I like it. Perfect. So thanks for watching. Let us know anything else you'd like us to test. We're always looking for excuses to come out here on beautiful spring days and throw lead down range. We're gonna make sure we bring stuff so we don't have to walk back and forth the entire time. But uh, yeah, let us know what else you like to see. Hit that subscribe button. And like. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank God someone said it besides me.